this production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. Uh, yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes, right here on the Game Fire Network. Website's almost almost ready, guys. We're banging it out. We got a large portion of the important sections done. The theme is pretty much done. We're working on adding up the content, getting it on there, getting it ready, getting everything organized now that we have the design set up. So, it's coming soon. This is Tales of Heroes video replay review number 40. Uh, this is to make up for that we had um, two weeks ago. We missed one, so we're making up for it. We got two this week. This is 40. The next one will be 41. Rails and metal on this one. The next one is going to be an awesome match from the replayed pack, so you're not going to want to miss that either. The website's talesof.wordpress.com right now. Soon it'll be word, uh, Game Fire is where you'll find us. So without further ado, let me introduce myself and my co-host. I am Bridger, and with me is Vittensby. Again, welcome to the program, sir. Oh, uh, you didn't give me a cute inter internet that's for, yeah, that's the audio name. Show. If, if they want to hear what your cute uh, information audio internet name is, then they can go listen to the audio show. That's what I say. Vittensby <sighs> is terrible. I feel left out now. <laughs> Darn it. Well, I was righteous this week, so thank you, Bridger. <laughs> okay. uh, but we got a great game. First time that we featured Rails and Metal yeah. on the show. Um, looks like the positions are fixed, although I've noticed on Relic on Online lately, a lot of people are prefer preferring to go uh, random. But uh, this is this should be a pretty good game. It, it's a real long one. Um, we got Boombastic and Boom Gakko Bastic. versus The Good Nazi. I never thought I'd be saying that word on the air. Um, and uh, Hessler. So, yeah, two strategies for Rails and Metal. Rush the fuel in the middle or and go for a quick tech strat or rush the sides and try to hold that and go for a uh, heavy heavy munitions-orientated uh, strategy. Three yeah. kind of... Well, you can usually do the buildings and the victory points, so why, why don't you go ahead and uh, do your... Do your worst, Bridget. Sure. First thing I'd like to point out, this is one of our user-submitted replay reviews, so we're not claiming that these guys are geniuses. We're not complaining, claiming that these guys are expert at micro. In fact, they're probably not, but uh, we're going to see what they're doing, and we're going to analyze it and see, okay, well, here's a mistake that a lot of new players make so that you, the viewer, will learn not to make some mistakes. I believe last time we had, you know, somebody was using a Panzerfaust on a Jeep, and we were pointing out why that was a very inefficient use of munitions, because the Jeep's almost certainly going to get away, and one Panzerfaust isn't enough to kill it, and it's not really worth killing a Jeep, etc., etc. That's the point of this show. So don't yet write us angry emails saying, oh, those guys were terrible. I can't believe they didn't send that firestorm onto the blah, blah, blah instead. I don't know, whatever. So we have, again, the victory points right down the middle. So you've got a very fierce frontline combat on this map compared to other maps like, uh, for example, Hill 331 that has a lot of scattered um, uh, action going on and a lot of flanking and such if you can get behind the enemy lines. But in this one, the, the front line is so short that you get a very different kind of game, which is one of the things I really like about the different maps in Company of Heroes. They, they have these sort of different perspectives of, and ways of looking at things. Again, like Vinsby said, the fuel in the middle, the high fuel, this plus 16 is very important. Um, it's, it's in a little courtyard surrounded by walls and stuff with a lot of cover. There's a lot of battles that usually take place over this plus 16. You'll probably see barbed wire put somewhere in these choke points early to try and keep people from getting in. That's usually a big point. And it's right next to the center victory point, which makes it a very, very provocative spot. Uh, other important objectives, again, like Vittensby said, on the right and left side of the map, you'll find plus 10 munitions and plus 5 munitions right next to each other. So if you can hold this area on the left, you'll not only get the plus 5 and plus 10 that are here, you might be able to push up to your enemies plus 5 and de deprive them of a few munitions. Um, so we'll see how this game plays out. We are at the 5 second mark for those of you following along with the video replay, uh, uh, with the actual replay file. And uh, why don't we get started, Vittensby? Sounds great. All right, at the five second mark, starting in five, four, three, two, one, zero. There we go. So I'm going to be watching Gakko and Bum Boombastic, and we'll see exactly what they do. We've got a weapon support center and probably, yep, a barracks opening early uh, on the allied side. And we have at least, let me see, we've got one engineer, or sorry, two engineers start on both sides, it looks like. 
Yep. I don't know about the barbed wire rush. I don't really think uh, anyone's doing that uh, too much anymore. But uh, well, I do because I looked at the replay analyzer, and that's what came up. <laughs> Sweet. I'm wrong again. No. Um, yeah, well, I'm but just saying when, I had inside information. <laughs> uh, the uh, the Vinzvi strategy of the week was uh, two words: MG emplacement, and uh, see what you can do on it. I was playing a couple games on Rails and Metal today, and and I would like to say, and that is why the MG emplacement is overpowered on Rails and Metal because I was thinking, hey, at Axis. Fixed positions, they get three spots to put their MGs, right? You got that house right there and south of the VP. You got that ledge right there north of the VP. And then you got that house right there north of the VP. Well, what if I just build five engineers and build a couple of MG emplacements early on? Well, you know what? It's pretty brutal. But uh, getting back to the game, uh, as you can see, that, that building kind of south of the middle VP, very important to garrison early on by either sides um, for the southern player. Uh, you don't want to get pinned in your base by an MG uh, in that building, and for the northern player, um, you don't want to be walking around that MG, although it's more of a handicap for the southern player. Uh, not too much of a surprise here going for a rush for the center, but I'd like to say that's a very interesting uh -oh. capping order for the Axis. Yeah, engineer charge on these Volks that are in heavy cover, but they're doing massive damage to the engineers. They left heavy cover, unfortunately. I think that's the bad squad AI. One guy's running all the way around here. Where's he going? I'm going to get a better shot. I'm going to shoot into the dirt. <laughs> He's finally going back to dress. Thank you, Relic, for the fantastic squad AI. That guy just got scared. We've got a weapon support center opening early, so we've got a machine gun inside that brick building. And it's already in the process of suppressing the enemy machine gun, and he's got it killed two of the members. Wow. Very, very nice upset early in the game. Usually the Axis machine guns dominate. The Allies were able to get theirs out first. Looks like they're going to be uh, in big trouble now, though. They're getting lots of things shooting at that MG. They're going to lose it. Going to lose it. It's gone. And that's about it. The riflemen are probably going to be able to finish off. Why, why isn't it dead yet? How come it hasn't? <laughs> that is are why they going to be able to save it? <laughs> and that is why that little red building on <laughs> Rails and Metal is over. Oh, you're kidding me. It gets away! <laughs> that building right there, it does not fire um, west, of, yeah, west of it. It can only fire, you know, three directions. Um, so that's important to note. But if you can get an MG in there early on, that's a really strong position. One of the things I noticed that's kind of like the fatal curse of Rails and Metal is that uh, you tend to focus so much on the middle of the map early on that you don't cap the points. Uh, near near your base, um, y you know that's just the way that kind of the map played out. But uh, so you'll see that the Allied players haven't uh, capped the plus ten fuel, which is really a huge, huge, huge mistake um, early on. But we'll see. I'm pretty sure that they recover from it. Um, it looks like we have a mortar. This is a great map for for early mortars. Some people say it favors Axis because of the MGs, Whoa. easy MG positions. Some people say it favors allies for the reason that you just saw, that that uh, Volk squad just got annihilated by that mortar. And don't forget, mortars have smoke as well, so you can use that to cover your cover your riflemen. Yeah, as they're trying to flank behind an MG or something, very useful early in the game. And because this has a limited front is why mortars can be very useful. You can use that same mortar on so many places, whereas on bigger maps, it, you know, mortars are situationally useful, so you bring the mortar to a situation where it's useful and maybe... And, see, and he's using, using right smoke right now. Very nice yep. use of the smoke. Very nice. The question I is, I've, I've what's in that smoke, seen... Bridger? Yeah, that's a good question. But this is uh, Vietnam, so I think okay. I think there's nothing funny about it. Um, <laughs> early sniper in the game, trying to help out these Volks, and that's not a bad option. As long as you keep them protected, that's that's going to be very useful. We'll have to see if they can pull out a barracks before the sniper does too many, or sorry, a jeep rather, from the barracks before the sniper does too much damage. The uh, And this is why that building right there, you do not want to let uh, Axis get an MG in there. It, they oh, yeah. really... Yeah, especially with the long range, it's it's pretty brutal to try to walk across there. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, that, but, that building covers the entire stretch around, like, this this road that leads up from the right allied base all the way down. I think it even, it doesn't quite cover the plus 10 munitions down here, but it covers basically the only way to get access to this victory point, unless you want to try and cut your way through the, uh, the side 
where the where the fence meets the side, you might be able to shoot the fence like the wooden fence. You can actually do an attack ground to try and knock that wooden fence out. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. I I really hate that building. I hate it and love it. I I'm always the one that starts in the in the kind of you know the eastern part of the map, whether it be in the north or the southeast, and either either love getting in that building or when your opponent has it, it's it's a nightmare. Um, but uh, one thing that my only complaint really about this map is is that the that fence, that wood fence, just really bothers me. Um, that 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 building just holds, as far as I can see, far too much territory, and it's pretty much impossible to to flank and get an M uh, get a grenade in there early on. So um, I don't know. Nothing needs to really be changed, but I just like to see a couple couple different things. On that note, a lot of people either like to you know do a double barracks opening, which is kind of the unconventional way of oh, doing wow. it. Yeah, that mortar, mortar just, just got, got owned. owned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was like the flamer engineers basically popping in in one shot. But um, some people like to do the weapon. What you see in this game, which is the weapon support center opening uh, with a barracks. Um, the double rifleman, if you play it very aggressive, you can uh, actually you know do it pretty effectively. But if you like to play a little more passively, rely on mortars, then definitely getting a weapon support center is advised because it's extremely risky with the double rifleman. You really rely, to, uh, I think, a little bit too much on early grenades. Let's check out what's what's going on here. The the allies have a sniper trying to counter snipe. There's and, that double Panzerfaust yeah, bridge. <laughs> double Panzerfaust actually did work pretty well because he was trying to save his sniper. So in that situation time sensitive he needed to kill that jeep ASAP so that's one of the few situations where uh, you might want to waste that many munitions because that sniper is now safe to come back another day surprisingly the allied sniper missed his first shot I think he might have actually been a little bit too close I think the jeep wasted too much time fighting those engineers down on the right his teammate probably was wasn't able to get him to say come on there's a sniper up here just let me see him and I'll shoot him you know because I was just waiting for that machine for that Jeep to get up there to reveal the sniper but it didn't happen fast enough so the allies have now lost it looks like two mortars because there's a mortar up there and we also saw a mortar down here that got hosed so um, yep. that's interesting I read something and something that I hadn't actually known before mortars and 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 machine guns and and crews like that will only drop weapons if they're killed while the weapon is already set up or while it's undeploying it won't drop right. a weapon if it's deploying or if it's moving so that's 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 the distinction i never actually made myself for some reason never actually connected the dots and said gee why does it drop sometimes and not others i thought it was a random chance it, i do believe it still is a random chance although your chance is of it dropping while you're moving or much greater I, but, uh, no while it's moving it's kind of non-existent oh sorry much greater for sorry, that when it's deployed is what i mean yeah no no but uh interesting enough that uh, this is very very typical on this map you, you'll see it all the time but uh if you lose the middle fuel you'll tend to go in a you're going to expect you know armor rolling on the field um and that's why they're that both of the Axis players, um, despite having the fuel to tech up to tier three, have chose to go uh, tier two. Uh, it's an interesting map for bunkers, and as I kind of learned today, it's an interesting. I'm not saying it's overpowered. <clears throat> it is uh, MG emplacements uh, type map, as well as uh, static defensive positions, because as you can see, the fighting really never, unless it's a complete walkover, um, never really proceeds past the the center of the map. So. Uh, but it's interesting to see tier two with uh, with blitz, um, but I can understand that the fear of AT guns, uh, the fear of not having enough anti tank, um, can be quite a quite a threat. So, all right, so we've got that sniper still doing damage over here on the uh, on the Axis side. If you can keep having a sniper just stay alive the entire game to just pick off infantry as he will is one of the very useful things in uh, in Company of Heroes. If you can micro that sniper and keep him alive. But it's difficult because your enemy is always going to have a, a sniper hiding somewhere. So the allies put their machine gun in this wooden building, which is okay. But I really would have built just a couple of sandbags here to get the same effect. And they would have had, I think, more cover than a wooden building. Because wooden buildings are notoriously bad at stopping bullets in this game. Yeah. And they catch I on mean, fire it, real easy. Does it does it even have a window on that side of the house? Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I think you can only shoot out the side that is pointed out right now, though. 
Uh, no, you can shoot out the other, the other side. And in fact, that's that's really annoying when they move up when they solidify the center and then they move up their MG into that building, building we right have a there. Medic station. Yes. Somewhere. There it is. Very that is... useful. That's actually not a bad place for it too if you control the center. I was waiting for to see that. Thank God. Where is it, by the way? Just to the no. left of the 16 fuel. And now the rifles are charging. Ah, uh, there it is. Oh, it doesn't man. show up on the mini map. What the hell? There's no machine gun here. Rifles are popping out of every which direction. The sniper's in big trouble. He backs out of there real quick. Oh, man. It's if he doesn't see that mortar, he's got to be careful. Yeah, and those that... mortars are going to start dropping right on his position. He's been standing still a little too long, but he's moving. Good timing on those riflemen. Just barely get out of there. I don't know if they're going to do enough damage, but... Uh, that was pretty interesting. We've got Shrek Grenadiers here. Again, like you said, waiting for... Oh, here comes the next rifle charge from the uh, from the other team. He's actually uh, teched up to... Tech back backwards, rather, to barracks. So he's going to try and come finish off the squads that his teammates started. That's very good teamwork there. Unfortunately, there's just too many of them. Not to mention the, uh, the Stormtroopers there. I'm not sure that was the best time to charge in. Maybe if they had bars, that would have worked. But certainly, that's a good argument for having uh, machine guns with you. Even if uh, the enemy's got a sniper, you keep the machine gun back. I'm really interested how, on how this is going to play out because we have a medic bunker on the Axis side and then an aid station on the Allied side. So, the medic bunker? Uh, it, you can't see it because of the. it's right underneath the tree, just south of the... If you go along the middle road, a little bit east of the VP, and then south where the okay. rusted car is, it's right behind the tree. Um, you, you can see the square on the mini-map, right? Uh, I think so. Let you don't check. see it? It's right beneath the MG and the and the AT gun on the road to the right of the center okay. VP. Let me roll around. Got yeah, it? I see it now. Wow, that's actually not a bad place to put it. They can't see it if they're on the regular yeah. standard view. That's and that really is cool. how you camouflage a medic bunker. <laughs> <laughs> There's the medic, though. They can see the medic, and they just follow him back. We've got Airborne, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, the good na uh, Not the good Nazi. This is uh, Gakko. And we'll see what his uh, opponent does. If they, they're smart, they should target this medic to try and kill yeah. him. Yeah. But sometimes you don't notice that in the heat of battle. <laughs> We've got Indeed. mortars in big trouble as they're getting completely pinned by wherever the Axis mortars are here. Oh, nice. We have a croc uh, coming out in the south, the oh, southeast of it. Wow. It just ran uh, right around those three wow. mines. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's I see. L that's lucky. That was real lucky. <laughs> Unless he's got a map hack. No. I don't think no. so. No. He just got... But, uh, that, that... I don't know. Those are probably not the best positions for mines. But maybe oh, they dear are. God. <laughs> That's right. I was just realizing those mines were put there to guard the enemy when he tries to cap this point. Those mines are basically in a position to counter infantry, not vehicles. Vehicles, you want to put them between trees or next to buildings or something where the vehicle will have to run around. So now we see the victory points have been slowly ticking down the axis. There's the second yeah, good shot way to... from the AT gun. Look at how much health it's killed. Barely anything. Yeah. Two shots in and the, the tank just runs around it. I mean, that's just a very obvious example of why the Pac-38 struggles. Yep. Uh, and a good good way to position mines, getting back to that for a second, is if you know that the opponent is going to approach from a certain direction, such as what you saw with the rifleman, you want to stick uh, the mines. Um, if Bridger zooms in, you can notice that there's three of them. You want to have two facing that particular direction. It does more damage. And then you should line up two mines um, right right next to each other because normally a squad will will proceed a little bit further after it hits the first mine and you have a greater chance of annihilating the whole squad rather than just pinning um, yeah. which is uh, which is one of the reasons another reason to build mine is because if someone runs over it you get pinned so uh, it delays the time but that medic bunker could go down if those stormtroopers don't uh, uncloak soon I can't believe the machine gun from all the way over there is pinning all those riflemen over there Ouch, Croc's gone. Yeah, Croc got honed. I think he, he might have had time to pull it back earlier, but I don't think he knew there were two squads of Stormtroopers cloaked there. Now, was it me, or were these all these guys over by the house here were all pinned by the machine gun way up here on the right? I don't know. It looked like it. Yeah. Right now, the rifle spam is just really destroying the Axis. They're trying to hold <laughs> it down like... with one machine gun, and it's not enough. There goes one grenade. 
Where, where's the strafing run where you need it, Bridger? Yeah, right? <laughs> Look at those he doesn't, He's not the right-hand side, though. That's a big mistake. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, paratroopers on this map, and even infantry company, um, just fire up in general on maps like Rails and Metal and the Rain are extremely, uh, extremely useful and Lost important. Sniper, and if you, I heard. And the best way, if you have a machine gun, uh, and you know that they they have a you know fire up ability, say they went airborne, you got paratroopers, infantry company, got rangers, is just to keep a squad of MP40 Volks kind of somewhere close, um, or you know a squad or two of unupgrade Volks. It really works better with MP40 Volks because um, they don't fire up. I'm just amazed at how many riflemen are flying everywhere right now. But... Oh no! Two of those Panzerschrecks hit the medic bunker he's trying to repair. <laughs> wow. But it, did you notice then that last battle they had two Volk squads that were down to almost nothing, but they were at the, uh, they were in behind heavy cover the whole battle, and he moved yep. his storms over at that same heavy cover. So the riflemen were all out in the open, they were maneuvering around and taking lots of damage. That's the way you want to micro your forces if uh, you've got something like that stone stone wall there. Uh, do you see this? Do you see the allied me medic right by the Axis medic bunker just running casually by? Look at it. You see it? Yeah. Right by, I see look him. Look at that. He, where what did he go? That? He went all the way to the right to grab he something? Went, yeah, He's but didn't we talk anybody. about how like medic bunkers kind of counter each other? Yeah, I medic. think he ran over uh, there, but he's not bringing anybody back, see? Yeah, well, I mean, we had one free squad of riflemen pop out and one free grenadier squad that I saw pop out. So, so far we're at one and one with the, uh, with the effectiveness of, of either one of them. This is a great thing to do on this map is go defensive doctrine because most of the time the fighting will either be in this thin line, invisible line called your territory or their territory aka the center of the map and uh, for the fatherlands just great on this map as well as oh dear god as right as I say flax are great well this is the reason why ouch you want to be careful <laughs> and defend your flags but uh, flak 88s are really good on this map because uh, especially on the center road um, they just pretty much as long as you have visual um, especially with a cloaked sniper or a scout unit can just completely wow. annihilate anything coming up wow. Two AT guns and a couple of Shreks easily finish up a croc in almost no time. Now what they needed is to get that flak repaired and get somebody uh, manning it. And maybe they'll be able to lock this place down. Yeah, look at the horde of riflemen up by... I'm not sure in the upper right. The, the wow. guy with the tank depot. That's, uh, that's quite the spam you got oh, there. Oh my lord, it is quite the spam. I don't think he's building anything but that. <laughs> and a tank depot, apparently. Where the hell are all the mani the manpower in this game going everywhere? We've got uh, a stu on the field, which actually works out very well against rifle spam. Um, yep. We, we talked about one of the crazy bugs in the game is that um, paratroopers on the move cannot be hit by flak 88s. They might get some splash damage, but there's no way. There's a 0% chance to hit them on uh, uh, when they're moving, which is really weird. And only 60% or something. You mean when they're fired up? No, I think regular? just when they're moving, if I recall. That was that was the way it was. Mm. It was on uh, linearcurve.net. Or what is it, ah. cohstats.com now? Oh, but now you have the massively long range of that Flak 88. And it's going to be put to use here. Um, so he's probably got defensive... Uh, the, the defensive... Uh, vision... Oh, my God. Um, it's completely... I can't remember the name, Vittensby, this is where you help me out in remembering the name. Advance warning, uh, thanks for that. Yeah. There. You're welcome. <laughs> I had oh uh, some, my I was God, eating some pasta. Devastation! Apologize. Allies and Axis alike, mortars start dropping on both of them, and there goes the last guy who was on top of the Flak 88. A mortar from his own team finished him off. Those medics are brave men to run into the field. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ah, this is awesome. This uh, is carnage, man. <laughs> He's uh, dropping mortars the on the Flak 88, trying to destroy it. I can't tell how. What's the what's the damage on it at? Uh, it hasn't taken much damage, but the crew definitely gets pretty pretty easily killed. Yeah, when I'm glad they buffed the damage, or, or the the HP on on the Flak, so it's uh, not so easily damaged. Is he gonna man it? Pairs. No, his own uh, guy <laughs> shot it. Oh my god. Oh guns god, it's satchel be... charged. What the hell? I guess he didn't notice, oh. but it worked! Look at that! Oh man, this is... This is the humanity! 
I can't yeah, believe AT turns. guns still do that much damage to Flax. It's so weird. <laughs> oh, wow. I was lucky that he kept his half track alive. Not entirely crucial this game, but certainly it's nice to have an extra half track around. But um, we do have a croc. No, that's a regular Sherman up by the middle building in the north, uh, kind of having pathing issues. Yeah. Which they, didn't they promise in opposing fronts that the pathing yeah. is going to be. They're yeah, gonna so fix I'm it. looking forward to that. Look at all the green XPs. Oh, there goes the there goes the half. Track. There's the half track. That would have been really nice to have too, though, just to re reinforce your units. We've still got these two AT guns that have just kind of been sitting here shooting at Good infantry God. most of the game. They got three mortars over there. I was wondering why there was the so Axis much. Axis mortars. Yeah, yeah look at wow. the right with level one veterancy too. Support support um, unit yep. veterancy. Don't really see that though. Don't yeah, really I think he see did that, that for much. the flak, didn't he? Probably. Yeah, I would assume. Or the AT mm, guns? No, I think it's support vehicles for that, but uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it does fall under the same category as MGs, mortars, um, etc. Oh yeah, he does have that on the AT gun as well. That's Hessler we're talking about. So maybe he got both the veterancy and that. Wow! Just nice gone. job. That's the way you use stormtroopers. Let him think, let him get overconfident, let him think I've got plenty of health, I'll take out this AT gun. Finally, all of a sudden, BAM! Four Shreks, five out of nowhere. Very, very nice job there. We've got a rebuilt... Look at, there used to be a nice fence here. It was a nice little next to the road. You had... This is a nice little... And now it's carnage. Now it's the craters on the moon, is what it is. So, we, he's lost <laughs> most of his freaking pioneers throughout the whole thing. They were trying to repair it when all that stuff went down. Okay, so the, the, the map is still polar, only now we have the allies in control of that middle point, so the, the tickers go in the opposite direction here, which is very interesting. This bottom yeah, be, point isn't controlled by anybody. Yeah, that's interesting. We have uh, some LM, an LMG on those grenadiers, now we have uh, level 1 veterancy on infantry for two two grenadier squads, actually. And this one's upgrading with the second uh, LMG, the one that's by the airplane wing. Um, I wonder what's going to happen to those riflemen. I predict uh, about two seconds of life once I, those LMGs start firing. Double LMGs on one of them. I yeah. think that. Yep. They're at oh, long range, God. so it's not doing a lot of damage now. There goes the next. <laughs> All right. Will it suppress? Is the question. How many rifle it's squads got do you one need? Of them. Yep. But the other, but now they're suppressed for suppressive ha, fire. Ha. Oh man. Isn't that irony right there? Only a one is shooting. It's chewing them up, but only one is shooting. Yeah, the other one's like retreat. crawling away. Wow! Nice timing! Awesome! The stud lets out an explosive round killing, I think, four guys, at least. Now the rifles are in trouble. The stud's gonna back up to avoid stickies, of course, but uh, certainly... And the can... medics doing their job. If you look at where all those riflemen used to be, there's a medic <laughs> picking up right next to the... Uh, if you yeah. zoom in, that's a great... That's, that's, that's the German one there. there. Because, yeah, and there's uh, the he's... allied one right next to it. <laughs> Come on, That's Hans, really cool. you'll, you'll make it. We're going to put you in a new squad. It'll be good times. You're going to be upgraded to Volksgrenadiers. I think the or medics the should only be able to shoot other medics. It's like, hey, this is my body. Get away. <laughs> yes, yeah, steal the <laughs> allies. We're going to make him into the ultimate soldier. <laughs> Am I missing yeah. something? Did we have howitzers going off? I thought I heard something. No, it's the flak. Oh, it's the flak. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, we do have a, we're just waiting for a tiger over here from the, the good Nazi, who I think I actually played in a 2v2 in the last couple of days. So, uh, I don't know. I don't recall our game, but maybe you could post if we actually did play. It's not really a name that you can quite forget now, is it? So, um, but I, I'd say overall, um, we got, I mean, we got another rifle squad that just popped out. I see, say we had at least two grenadier squads from the medic bunker, so, I don't know. I think that, that each, each of them are reasonably balanced against each other um, as far as what they give you back but um, people have been complaining that the aid station takes damage from small arms fire so I don't know but, uh, but the aid station is cheaper because it's only manpower so true I think that's sort of a nice little trade-off I think that's pretty cool allies yeah. snuck in and grabbed the victory point while at the extreme range of that uh, machine gun, they still managed to grab it. We've got a Flammenwerfer. Flammenwerfer. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're going to see if that's going to be able to defend uh, very well. I think we've got another squad of Grenadiers here, and I'm pretty sure, yep, it's another squad of Riflemen. Those medic what? bunkers are doing fantastic. 
Yeah, and that's exactly what the allies kind of need. Oh no, don't retreat that sniper. Oh, it's gone. Well, I was going to say they need more snipers, but... Uh, the bike's chasing them. Oh no. Yeah. What's interesting, well, what's important to note is, is one of the AT guns, the one that's furthest northeast, is turned the wrong way. Um, that can happen in a crazy chaotic game like this, but you got to always make sure that that AT gun, especially because um, it's, when it's cloaked, the first shot will be a critical hit, and you definitely want that first shot to do damage. Yeah, it's and plus 25% damage or something like that, I think. Yeah, and not not to mention that you're infinitely more vulnerable when getting shot from behind, so you just got to make, you know, be mindful of your placement of those uh, ATs. But uh, the only thing stopping the Axes from getting a Tiger on the field right now is population cap. Wow, He's really? at 51 or 63, and he needs uh, one more population now. Um, he can call in a tiger. He's floating they're 1,300 capping, manpower. They're capping the, uh, the munitions at the north there, so that might be enough. Oh, there's a grenade in the south. Wow, look at those uh, folks hanging on for dear life. Not going to happen. There was three of them at, like, 5% health, and they just got a eliminated really easily. And uh, here comes that tiger. A bit surprised there's no... Uh, oh! <laughs> I love the stow when it does really well like that. It's gonna shoot again. Here it goes. <laughs> uh, a little bit surprised on. that there's no veterancy on the on the tiger, but uh, I find that if you want to do the tiger, you should prepare for it with at least having level one veterancy on it before it comes in. Uh, just so you can you know prepare a little bit so it has the maximum efficiency when it does actually come onto the field and you don't have to you wow. know, worry about needing it in that stud just I got miss. owned by some yeah. airborne with recoilers. By the recoilers. Yep. I'm surprised they shot it only from the front but like two barrages killed it again you have the medic bunker like, with the medic bunker and another free grenadier squad <clears throat> those things are like invaluable in team games especially one like this where the ba where the action is so concentrated that one medic bunker will get uh, you know or one aid station will get everybody that dies. Wow, do we, do we have double airborne? Because I just know there's two ATs on the bottom uh, and an o by the OP munitions point where the recoilless are. You see those two ATs? Yeah, I see them. Do we have double airborne? No, they're both from the same guy. Okay, yeah, because I can't click on it because yeah. the features aren't quite... Uh, I can't tell what the other guy is yet. I don't think I've seen anything. We haven't seen anything but airborne. Oh dear god. Oh dear god. Here's yeah. probably uh, infantry company. That is why the howitzer red smoke that does nothing is overpowered. Yeah, and when I say, "Oh, it killed the aid station," no, it didn't. It's <laughs> still there. Never mind. It just uprooted the tree, so now you can see the aid station. <laughs> nice. That was a good place for it, but they just got everything out far too fast and too easily. Tick is still dropping for the allies here. We've got two tanks, but they're like, what the hell are we going to do? There's three AT guns and two flat cannons now. <laughs> That's what they should have targeted with that. Flat cannons can't move. And here that comes the storms to take care of that little problem. Bombing Better... run's available. Nice. No, 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 no munitions for it yet, but it's available. Yeah, they. this is a kind of a critical, not a critical error, but... You really need to have your your riflemen in in, <clears throat> in front, or at least kind of, yeah, a little bit in front of your AT guns, because as you can see, those stormtroopers would have been detected already if his riflemen weren't in a non-important you know area. So yeah, um, yeah, here comes the bundle nades. It's good usage of that. And the mortar oh, finished God, the, the other mortar. one. Nice. That was well executed. Yeah. Now how the heck did he get his? Stormtroopers over there. Did he come around the fence the regular way, or did he sneak through? He just snuck right in front of the AT guns. Ah, you know, yeah. Because in this game, AT gun crews are completely blind to stormtroopers. Yeah. Most of the time, and uh, fatal, fatal curse of of the uh, of fighting against AT guns that have uh, a lot of rifle squads, especially with the half track, is that uh, it's pretty easy to just reman the AT gun over and over but it again. Was I think that was a very good use of the tiger. The tiger came in, crushed the fence, and then backed out of there when they went to reman the AT gun. So as a result, he managed to get a couple of pot shots in on group riflemen, and it managed to uh, give a route for the for the storms to leave by. 
And now we yeah, have I agree. now we have a mortar versus AT gun game going on here. When the mortar <laughs> fires, the AT gun sees it, and so it shoots the mortar. <laughs> and we just had two medics going for the allies walk in there, and two medics for the axes yeah. walk in there. Is that three medics for the? No, that's the sniper. But uh, yeah, that sniper. Oh no, no, cloak him. Watch out for that machine gun. But uh, yeah, heavy that little pit, or I don't know. I call it a trench, but uh, it won't be a trench when. I don't even know what you call it. I guess that's supposed to be a makeshift trench because the British are getting that in opposing fronts, but. Um, that, that's really brutal when you get squads that are inside there. The the cover bonus that they get in that, it's it's quite insane. So having an MG in there or a, you know an LMG Grenadier squad, that's a that's a great position. Oh, that sucks. You gotta hate it when the machine gunner starts off with a half empty clip. <laughs> he sits there and he yeah. goes, "All right, time to fire." Ah, chunk, 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 chunk. Oh, dang it! I forgot to reload. Oh man. That's yeah, that really mortar annoying. is... Now uh, we got howitzers going off on the medic bunker. I guess bunker. He's, he's trying to kill that medic bunker. He doesn't care about anything else. No, he's just trying to slowly whittle away at that tree. He's trying to make a heart <laughs> for his girlfriend. Yeah, on that's the tree it. With the the no, tree's but, now uh, split into, There's no leaves left there, really. <laughs> but actually, <laughs> the medic bunker is gone. So. Very good baiting by that sniper. You could see he was pulling him off, and he pulled right back to a machine gun that was ready to defend him. So the troops that came got, you know, pwned a little bit by the machine gun. And we're yeah. at a bit of a stalemate here. There's not much happening. Wow. That's very risky. I'll just say it right now. Um, although the flax are supportive of each other in the sense that if ending comes down that main road, if the allies angle their units, if they see that, that you have your flax lined up that close to each other, uh, you, can, you can... I'm not going to call it an exploit, but if the guy who isn't, you know, microing the flak target, you can have the flak shoot the flak very easy. So you got to you want to make sure that you spread out your flax a little bit a little bit more than that. It's just a real it's a very expensive investment and it's pretty risky. Oh, there's another howitzer barrage. I think he's going after the flak here. It's dropping everywhere except on the flak so far. I didn't know it dropped in that big of a zone. There it is. Killed the crew in one barrage. Now's the time when he needs to make an assault. You don't really want to artillery a flat cannon unless you can, at least not with a howitzer off map, unless you can follow it up with an attack. Because now he's just going to reman it by the time he gets there. Which is yeah, we have level 3 uh, Hessler just got level 3 veterancy on his infantry, level 2 on the flak and the has that on the mortars as well and the AT guns so we're one step away from Armageddon here this is this is unprecedented in COH history <laughs> to have so much on your support units yeah veterancy wow Especially nice well. firestorm is he gonna kill that rifle squad he might just make it no it didn't kill him but it did a firestorm. lot of damage to that firestorm all the way over on the left VP you mean the uh, rocket barrage that was a rocket defensive. Barrage? Oh, He's I'm defensive. sorry. Yes, it must have been Rocket Barrage. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's all good. Duh. We know what you're talking about. <sighs> yep. It's hard to talk for two hours straight or something and not make a mis not make a mistake. Yeah. So. But uh. So the aid station is... is still up. Yep. They lost the medic bunker. They're, they they made another one though. Unless that's already been there before. But I see another one now behind the house where they used to have that machine gun. The Tiger hasn't really done much, has it? I mean, it's just been sitting there, hiding from the Allied ATs all game. Uh-oh, is this a strafing run? Bombing run? What we got? Oh, they shot down oh, the plane! Oh, dear God! <laughs> it didn't get off his bombs! It only got three off before it didn't get the, the last couple that would have actually hit the flak. I can't believe they actually shot it down. See, I'm disappointed because it, his suicide plane... It uh, it didn't do anything, but it would have been so cool if it landed right on the flak, yeah. you know, the flak that shot it down. That's the irony. Wow. I've seen so that happen in Battlefield. That's happened plenty of times. In Battlefield 1942, I was in the flak cannon, and I was shooting the plane that was trying to dive bomb me, and the plane killed me as it died. Do we have an on-map howitzer? Yeah, we do. I was wondering where all that was coming ah, from. Ah, yes, we have two of them. Wow, I didn't even notice that. I should have, yeah, but I didn't. I. Look at all that. They're going to get this, this, this one here. But the question is, they've got still got this Axis player's got plenty of mortars. Mortars are in trouble. Here comes a rifle squad. 
Gonna pin him pretty badly, but wow, a big shot from the Tiger takes out three, four of those guys in the rifle squad. They're trying to slowly move up the AT guns to put it to just pin that Tiger farther and farther back. They've now got the right and left flanks. Allies are doing a pretty good job creeping and using their artillery to counter the Axis positions here. Yeah, the good the good Nazi still doesn't have uh, veterancy on his uh, on his tank on his tiger, but uh, Hessler is more than making up for that because he has level three veterancy on his mortars now and AT guns and flags. So uh, this is this is uh, interesting. It's a it's an interesting game, I would say, on rails and metal. I mean, look at the uh, look at all the what is that? Is that dirt? Is that char? Is that it's just, it's just all black. That's all yeah. I see in the middle of the map. Just Lemon scroll around. In trouble, but it's gonna get away if it doesn't get hit by a howitzer. Oh my oh god. god, he's backing through the howitzer barrage. Run! Run! But apparently, the grenad never mind. That, he got the grenadier out just to squat out just Look at this, time. this is a constant. He's, he's doing what the Americans and the British did. Where instead of, you know, they all bombed during the same time, the Americans bombed at night, the British bombed during the day. And so you have constant barrage, and he can't do anything. So he lost the how the, the flak because he had probably an off map followed by one howitzer followed by the next. Yep, I think the Axis might have been playing uh, playing this a little bit uh, too too defensively with their. I haven't been watching those Volks. Uh, there's three squads of Volks up in the north, but. I don't know, maybe they could have been a little bit more aggressive. It seems like, you know, how many mortars did we see? How many AT guns did we see? Um, I think that what they might be able to improve on is just playing a little bit more aggressive. Use them offensively um, at the same time as using them defensively, but just creep, you know, push up a little bit. Because um, the territory lines have been kind of defined like this for quite a while, and now the Allies are finally, I would say, broken through their defensive line and are kind of kind of got the advantage at this moment but wow. still a lot left jesus christ did you see that uh yeah <laughs> he retreated yeah he's like There's, oh god uh, <laughs> too many storms too many volks wow oh man panzerfausts panzer uh -oh. <laughs> he's calling an off map there but it's gonna be useless no. what no no that's not what is that oh off map how yeah. i'm surprised he hasn't did his, didn't do a strafing run on that yeah maybe he's well, out of munitions the ally doesn't have enough munitions he's about 20 short. That would have been a perfect strafing run. Look at all those oh. guys there. Yeah. Oh no, they met a Sherman. <laughs> That's bad news. Those are all Volks. What are we going to see? See a triple Panzerfaust? Why are you running away? They're Volks. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's a nice mortar right next to that uh, OP. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Just remember, it's it's your fault, according to some people, if you keep your squads together, if you get absolutely owned by a strafing run. And yeah. if you want to hear more about the straight run, you can check out the audio show, which we talked about uh, all the ups and downs and wild swings, so to speak, of uh, of the strafing run and just right side of airborne in general. What I really want to see is some some kamikaze planes. We don't have any flax anymore, but you know maybe they'll rebuild it and they can use the 50 munition recon flight as a suicide bombers. <laughs> Axis did a good job flanking on one side. So much explosions over here on the left. I think there must have been a, a barrage over here that allowed them to sneak through instead of having to come through the middle. So now they're taking the left-hand side. They're going to start clipping the ticker down again. The Allies are pretty low, 161 wow. to 357. Another howitzer. He must be swimming in the munitions. Jeez, I guess so. He's leaving that his is why there. He's like, I can get, I can make more. I've got, I've got an aid station, and it's gonna pay off. He finished it, and he's gonna get out of there. There goes the Sherman that was over here. The Tiger's finally doing something. I was kind of disappointed that he just kept the Tiger sitting over here, pinned by these AT guns. Yeah. He actually, that was actually a good move though. Moving it, maneuvering it around. AT guns are static; they can't move very fast. You bring the, the tiger back, you make it pop up somewhere else, and the AT guns are kind of worth. We double walking Stuka. Really? Mm. Mm. I knew I saw some That's all I gotta say. back there, but I didn't see. There, yeah, they, there are. they are. Oh, baby. That yeah, that's is awesome. That's, that's like one artillery way to... wars right here. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to kill a howitzer. That's really? what I want to see. They I bet gotta, that's what they, do. Here come more howitzers. They got to see it. They got to see it on the map by now. This could very well do it. I mean, the howitzers aren't going to move, so... 
Yeah, he's just got to get it a little bit closer to ensure that they get killed. But they're right next to each other. That's probably a bad thing. But I guess he thinks, it's my base. They're never going to get all the way to my base, right? Come on, Look at stupids. that rifle squats that are just kind of hanging out. No, the medics have been discovered. <laughs> yes. So that's Run where all the riflemen are lives. coming from. Uh-oh, one of them has a brain, the other one does not. Run for your life. <laughs> if I only had a brain. Now, wouldn't a right. cluster grenade or a, uh, a, what is they called? Let's see if uh, the medics die. Well, I'm pretty sure they will. Once once that station gets killed. Let's see what happens. One more shot. This should be Unless gone. Unless we got a 5% bug on the medic station. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that pole. That pole is the most overpowered thing in Company of Heroes. There they go. They it off. Nice. And the medics did instantly just disappear. Oh no! The, the, the curveball stickies! <laughs> the attack of the curveball stickies! I can't believe how many sticky bombs. He really is rolling in the munitions. He must have everything OP'd. I mean, everything. Here comes the walking Stuka barrage! Very nice! He's gonna get a lot of riflemen with this if they do damage. There they go! Nice direct shots. He was just a little bit too far north. Another curveball <laughs> sticky. Crap. That tiger might make it out alive. Because the, uh, the, uh, the ally's being conservative with his Sherman. And here comes in, some backup. There it is. Good night. In beta, I was playing my first... Uh, it was one of my first 1v1s against uh, Soldier. And uh, Heaney and Shao casted that game. And that was where our little inside joke, uh, Micro Your Tiger Noob. I was playing as Axis, and I let my tiger get sticky bomb like that. And uh, it was just like a long running joke. 17 times? <laughs> yeah, like 17 <laughs> sticky bombs. So I'll continue the tradition. For the good Nazi, micro your tiger noob. <laughs> and I uh, mean that lovingly, it was not something me and Heaney and said back in, and it was something like a, in our shoutcast in the fall, <laughs> we would say that to each other uh, a lot whenever we were shoutcasting each other's games. Good memories. I mean it lovingly, not yeah. negatively. So we have a uh, flak built up again. Uh oh, uh oh, is he gonna notice? He doesn't see it, his Volks Grenadiers are capping. They don't know! Oh my god, I can't believe it! Everything but one guy taken out in one fell swoop. That's the power of somebody who doesn't know it is a howitzer. Holy crap. Too bad everybody notices when I play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, he had all the time I, in the world to get out of there. Nice. We have another aid station down in the south. I'm loving it. By the just the yep. south of the of the uh, VP. Sweet. Uh, he's gonna go for another ch tiger charge, but look at all the pioneers. <laughs> oh man, that is quite the repair army uh -oh, right there. Oh, he's got. Oh he's god. Sending off the, the Here comes the Stukas. You better. Oh my god. Oh, he went too far back. He's gonna get a couple, but he gets no. too far back. Oh, uh, scatter effect. I'm surprised they haven't taken out the uh, the howitzers yet. That's I guess it's not something that occurred to me. It didn't occur to me until just now. Actually, the howitzers yeah. have been trying to counter battery fire against the uh, the walking Stukas, but that's one of the advantages of them is they're very mobile. Mortars are a lot harder to get around. They've got to be, they've got to undeploy. This is really odd because the, uh, the the good Nazi the right. is is teching up to tier four right at one of the most crucial moments of the of the game. I'm not quite sure why he's getting the Panzer command. I mean, he doesn't need the UXP. Um, he really, I mean, he has well, you know, tigers, Knight's Cross right? would be very nice to have. Triple veterancy think, Knight's Cross ooh. against all those rifles. Suppression fire, but, I mean, I don't know. Possibly. Um, what level of veterancy does he have on his infantry? If I could, Yeah, he's got level two. Mm. Maybe, at least they get some suppression resistance now in this patch. And we got the double walking Stuka barrage going off on the ooh. VP in the north. And a counter battery fire by the... Uh-oh, the tiger's stuck in the middle. It did no damage? There's the second one did damage. That was kind of weird. The first yeah. one sort of missed. Well, but... was that off-map howitzer? I don't know. Uh, yes, it was an off-map because it had smoke, yeah. so it was. I he might see. be dropping a, a regular howitzer on it, too. I can't. The howitzers both have oh. triple veterancy now. So who is going to win this game is the question, because it looked like allies had it. Oh, the walking Stuka's dead! Too close for too long! And wow! You know how we talk about how the last guy alive on a flak or an AT gun kills himself? Yeah. I don't think he kills himself. It looked like he sat down, he like kneeled down and got shot in the back, is what it looked like. 
So maybe there's some invisible officer saying, "You're the rest of your squad died. You're not good enough." Kajum, good night. <laughs> Indeed. Now, this is this look is at those clumped be... volks. This I, I gotta say, sorry. This is not something you want to do. It only takes one squad to capture a point. It does not increase the speed at which you capture if you keep all your volks clumped while a Sherman is shooting high explosive rounds at them. Okay. Okay. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Yeah, there's a BAR right there. Oh god, why did he retreat it? No. Yeah, uh, I think he wanted to reinforce. Probably should have brought oh, the walking no. Stuka forward instead, but that's not his walking yeah. Stuka, probably. Oh no, it isn't. Um, he's repairing the flak. Um, that's really smart. A lot of people don't know that you can repair the actual, like, AT guns. You can repair, you can repair flaks. Not, not everyone knows that. Where the hell is that flak firing? Look at that rifle squad snuck all the way behind the lines, completely decapped the right side, and here comes the reason why, like you were saying, he went into tier 4, we got Knights Cross, level 2 veteran C. And yeah. as well as another, no, that's not a tiger, that's a, that's a half track. <laughs> looks like a tiger on the map, on the mini map. He had to grenade the mortars, because they had triple veteran C, and it was just taking too long to kill. <laughs> he grenaded the mortar. <laughs> he's, he's sitting there with bars and a rifleman going, Why won't you die? I'm shooting you in the head! Oh, and here man. comes the Stuka. And th this is the other Axis strategy that I've always been talking about on, on Rails and Metal. I, whenever we've kind of talked about the map, that about uh, going on, you know, the Tier 2 way with all the anti-tank stuff rather than actually building tanks. Because as you've noticed, there's not been one tank except that Tiger the entire game. The Stuh. So, the Stuh was also out. Uh, well, the Stuh. So, okay, the Blitzkrieg. But you know what I mean. There's no Tier 3. It's the non-Tier 3 way of playing uh, of playing Rails and Metal. Often happens when you either intentionally go for the side points or you, uh, you lose the fuel early on in the center. Jeez, he's just using those... Howitzers to completely destroy the uh, the, the flat guns. I mean, this I, I would not build any new flat guns if I were him, just because it's just going to be destroyed. There's no yeah, way that, that stop Howitzer those. Bridger. Look at the Howitzers. Double level three veterancy. Oh yep. dear God. I've seen that. They've oh, been doing a lot of damage. God. And we have the axis ticking down for like the last five minutes or so here. Check out the Knights Cross with the LMG by the Walking Stuka. <laughs> They don't, no, they don't have an LMG. That's a bar. Or no, I'm it's an at a LMG. One from you, because there's a bar on the left side. It's an LMG. If you scroll into that nice cross right by the tiger in the north, it's an LMG. No, I'm looking at him. He's got a bar. That's an LMG. The one by the north victory Is it? point. Yeah, M MG42 light machine gun. See, it just dropped right by the tiger. Um. Right above the tiger with I the damage. See, I see, I see it yeah. drop, but I see the Knight's Cross holding a bar right now. You, so you were looking at the other both. Knight's Cross. Oh, okay. The, the, the one that the guy that just died who was okay. holding that LMG. Gotcha. Yeah. I was looking it, at. It had a sliver of health. Oh well. The listeners yep. at home, the, the viewers at home, are going. He's right to your left. Where are you looking at? You're looking at stupid. Vittensby's right. I'm like, okay, whatever. Axis no. retaking. How howitzers game. or rocket barrage going off on that MG. Right there, south of the middle, VP just got obliterated. Yeah, that's rockets, I think. Those are coming Definitely in too straight rocket down, rocket. and they did too much damage to be uh, walking stupas. What the hell is that in the middle of it? Like a well or something that's now... I don't know, I was just that? thinking about that. That's kind of weird. Uh, this is weird. But, I mean, everything on this map is destroyed. I can't remember what the hell was there when it was still alive. Tiger getting repaired. Now Knights Cross going to take back the VP. That's smart. They need to sh slow that. They slow that VP down. Yep. They've got to face a tank, but that's okay. And we have Tigers uh, in trouble. Oh no, never mind. It's got have, plenty of help. Yeah, we got upgun Shermans now. Um. Allies seem <clears throat> to be in trouble. They don't have a lot of stuff on the map right now. They've got like yeah, I... a rifle, an airborne, an AT, a half track, some howitzers, and some more riflemen. Axes have. Knights Cross, Stormtroopers, you know, Walking Stukas. We've got at least an AT gun and a flak, lots of Pioneers, Tiger. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty sure that, the, I mean, the Allies still control two VPs, though, so it's quite possible they could take away the, take away the win, but uh, I got to give the good Nazi a lot of credit. He definitely does not have Tiger Syndrome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is, which is nice to see. Uh, man, these Shermans just do not stand up to all this veterancy and a tiger. Oh god, another howitzer. 
He's moving him out of the way, though. Did a little bit of my, damage there. Okay. My question is, what is the munition income of the player in the south? I don't I know. Have no idea. It's got to be phenomenal. I don't. Does yeah. he have any OPs here? I don't. There's one plus eighteen. He OP'd that plus ten there. Um, that's it. I mean, they've just been taking the regular munitions income except for that. Yeah. And there was an OP on the plus ten on the left there too for a while. And here comes double walking Stuka Barrage. Probably going to be on the fuel, is my guess. The center. No, nope. no. South it's, of the center. Uh, yep. I guess it was just a little bit too far north there. See, and this is this is the kind of game why COH is just a hell of a lot of fun to play. Oh, yeah. You play one like this, you're like, first of all, you have a cold sweat afterwards. But besides that, I mean, Knights Cross are going to annihilate know. that airplane. There he goes. And if you lose, you want to tear your hair out, but when you win a game like this, even after playing it, you get the really good amount of satisfaction. Yeah. That, it's this... almost tied now. Look at this. We've got one and one VPs. The allies are taking back the left. The Axis can probably take back the center. They just got to pull somebody down there. Did those riflemen just run away from a triple veteran C pioneer? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only hey, thing they were fighting. <laughs> hey, that Pioneer is an MP40, okay? He does? Albeit, yeah, Pioneer is a Oh, oh yeah, yeah, but it, it does, it does a little bit less damage than a regular MP40. Yeah, it's, 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 so a, it's a, oh my god, double walking Stuka Barrage on the North VP. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're definitely losing the manpower war at, at this point. Um, you, you ask yourself how, though. I mean, they've had two, all those howitzers, the triple veterancy, double howitzer, I don't, I don't know, that but they're still winning. He's got his walking Stuka, he's not noticed, he's finally noticed his walking Stukas are targeted now. <laughs> Looks like they're going to get out after all. What he really could use is a repair station back here. Yeah, I was thinking of that earlier when I saw the, uh, when I saw all those pioneers. Back, we had like where, eight pioneers. Where maybe the allies won't be able to see it, you know, and, unless they get way deep in enemy territory. Like they're doing right they should, now, they're hiding in a barn. He should also be uh, remanning that flak if he can. He is one with the barn. <laughs> it's just a visual bug on my side. Are those knights crossed, I mean, they're not getting suppressed at all. I mean, they probably shouldn't be getting suppressed because it's an allied machine gun. That, that, that was true. a poor joke. But, uh, yeah, they weren't getting suppressed at all. Do you think the uh, the tech up to Tier 4 is paying off for the Axis? I mean, they, oh, they are man. losing this game right now. Um, oh, he was just a half a second short of the fuel. That was bad micro there. Um, as far as the tech up to Tier 4, I think he could certainly use... They could certainly use some uh, some Panzer IVs mixed in with this to do some really nice damage to infantry that are not that expensive as a Tiger and uh, yeah. help to f protect against this mass rifleman spam. But wow, we've got an LMG-42 on these Knights Cross too. They're going to do massive damage when this thing open opens up. But how come it, there wow. we go, now it's doing Fire. Fire! Oh no, grenade! Wow. Didn't do too much damage though. Knights Cross can really yeah. take a beating. Yeah. Wow, yeah. now the Axis are really in trouble. This this is probably end game here. I can't believe they, they the Allies came back. They have nothing on the field. This is so weird. You're not... I mean, this is... It seems to me you should not lose a game with two Tigers sitting there on the field when your enemy has, like, nothing except infantry. I yep. think they're being a little bit too cautious with the Tigers. Rather than Tiger Syndrome, this is like anti-Tiger -anti Syndrome or something. Yeah. Look, at, I don't know. Maybe the uh, the fact that they've had this, this aid station has kind of given them that extra yeah. manpower that they needed, but, uh... But, I mean, what's guarding these VPs? There's nothing guarding the right save for a single machine gun. The middle's guarded by nothing but said machine gun and a rifle squad. The left is guarded by nothing but rifle squads. I don't know. I think they're maybe a little preoccupied. Maybe, maybe they don't extra... even notice. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be Not everyone here. plays really balls out aggressive. That's true. <laughs> but, uh, and I mean that affectionately. Yeah. And I mean that in a good way. <laughs> now, MP40 Volks 
with triple veterancy is pretty freaking sweet. Sticky bomb on the half track. Did it miss? It, it missed. missed. Wow. It fell it off. Missed. That sticky bomb wasn't sticky at all. That was oh, a. Wow. That's a one. That's like a one in a million. Now chance. that's what they An could have used a while ago. Yeah. Yep. Definitely, I agree with that. An Austin would have been good. But they, they, I don't know why they only went after the one point. Look, the other one's still, they're winning. They could get there, but they're not going to. Howitzer's probably going to come down on the tank thing. Is he going to make it? How is it going down so fast? I can't believe it. Look at this. They were so close. Wow. That seems weird to me. The axis had capped the right side. How did it go from three to zero so fast? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just weird. All right. Wow. That was a pretty great game. Whew. Yeah, I'm sweating just from watching this. That was I mean, a crazy gotta... ending. That could have gone yeah. on for another 15 minutes easy. <laughs> and the, uh, the map. Holy crap. The whole thing. And notice it's like, oh yeah, it's you know just the center. <laughs> that center portion of the map is just completely charred and, wow. Yeah. Things could have done better. <laughs> it's like hmm. it's like the divide. Remember the divide was down this like center line down. There's basically the railroad that divides the map that goes from the bottom right all the way north to the top left. That was the divide where the allies had the left side of that. The axis had the right side of that. And so you go down the axis side of it and it's just like, look at this. Look at this devastation on the axis side from all the howitzer barrages. It's ridiculous. And then the Allied side, it's like, there's a couple of holes. Maybe there's a mortar. Over here, there was a bunch of, of, of howitzers later on. But Jesus Christ, that left VP. <laughs> yeah. Well, they really to needed be, to, they really to, needed to use those Stukas to take out the howitzer. I mean, now I'm looking at it at the end. They had three howitzers yeah. down there. And now that they, I'm not sure what the veterancy bonus on the howitzers is. But once they got level three on that, I'm sure that uh, it was pretty pretty crazy. So definitely trying to do a little mission to take out those howitzers would have been would have been helpful um, maybe a little bit less uh less manpower invested on the mortars um other than that i mean if you were going to get tier four maybe go a little bit earlier i think the austin it's not that great but if you use it kind of defensively can be and you're standing it still can be still pretty useful um other than that uh i don't know I don't know. What do you think, Ritter? I think the mortars did him very well early in the game, except when they were dropping stuff on their own guys. That that was kind of a bad thing. But um, early in the game, having those two or three mortars was really useful to counter battery fire the allied mortars, number one, to kill their uh, machine guns, number two, and to force their uh, – and to pin down their, their allied uh, – so, I mean, maybe they went a little bit too heavy on the mortars but later in the game, but I think in the early game it was very useful. Yep, I'm just zooming in on what looks like. I have no idea what he, what what. It's a body. That's all I know. Right where the tiger is, just south of it. There's just wow. Um, sorry, I'm starting to to really appreciate some of the graphics in this game, but uh, <laughs> we do have a level three sniper on the field. Oh yeah, just generally, I think uh, allies maybe a sniper or two here or there um, could could have helped out well, they uh, a little bit. Some yeah, point, they had a couple. Yeah, they got owned pretty bad, but um, I think snipers on maybe a little bit more sniper usage on either side. Um, but it's a it's a big risk with the snipers. Other than that, I mean, maybe use the tigers a little bit more aggressively. Gotten veterancy in preparation for it. Um, allies, allies was kind of a little bit counter counterintuitive on the uh, the southern player. I don't know who that is because this. The fo remove fog of war isn't as great as it could be, but going weapon support center and then barracks um, was really an interesting choice, especially because that was the airborne player, right? Or no? The airborne player was the right hand side. Okay, yeah, because I was almost sure because the howitzers were, <laughs> you know, the howitzers are by yeah. the other guy's base. It seemed kind of silly, but yeah, that's kind of odd that that he decided to get the motor pool. Um, being airborne and then start with weapon support center and then back tech to a barracks rather than just fill the gap with the the airborne troops. It paid off in the long run they won, but uh, that that was an interesting choice. I Good still think use one of the awesome things center. was the, mm -hmm. the 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 flax actually shooting down the uh, 
the, the, the bombing run before it managed to finish this bombing run. That's like one of the only times that ever worked. Probably because he had two flax. Yep. By bombing way, runs. You wanted the stats on the triple veterancy uh, howitzer. It has 50% increased accuracy, 50% increased penetration, and 25% increased damage. And it had that for the last half of the game. Two of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Oh, God. Yeah, and that is why a not not killed howitzer is <laughs> over. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. So, All right. Yeah. Good time, game. Time to end this show. Thanks everybody for tuning in to the show here tonight. Uh, we have another one out this week as well, so definitely want to check that out. It is between uh, one of the, uh, the the late guys, Dave, aka constantly constantly late another guy he saw online so uh definitely want to check that out thanks for tuning in to tales of heroes i am bridger with me was vittensby have a good night